This is the Cheap Life Venture 2 Plovdiv in Bulgaria. Now, why would you say it's the most obscure place I've been to on my cheap flight adventures? Because there is a charm of going to a very obscure place that hardly anyone's heard of. Sometimes, a really obscure places can have some hidden gems. For example, Kosice in Slovakia was one of my favourite cheap flight adventures, and all of the travel guides online pretty much dismissed the city, saying it's quite small and the old town's fairly small. But I'm not travelling to cities to see the old town. That's not the sort of thing most tourists go and see. Cities are far more interesting things to find than just what the tourist places are. And Kosis was absolutely fascinating. I absolutely loved the Tatra tram routes going right across the countryside to a factory in the middle of nowhere. It was really good. So what other obscure places have I been to? The best obscure places I've been to have to be in Ukraine, such as Ivana Francisk. Very few people have been there or even heard of it, and that was a really nice place to go to. But my all-time favourite obscure destination I've been to has to be Kharkiv in Ukraine, which was absolutely excellent. It was as good as Kiev and was an absolutely fascinating city. Very few people had even heard of this city. People have heard of it today because of what's been going on in the news and it's very sad to think of what's going on over there. So then, as for this cheap flight adventure, I'm going to Plovdiv, which is Bulgaria's second city. Sofia is obviously Bulgaria's number one city and it's pretty big. Plovdiv, on the other hand, is a very small city. It's not that much fair. But is there some hidden gems to find? Well, let's go and explore Plovdiv and find out. So, let's first start this adventure off with what I'd say is the most interesting building in Plovdiv, which is this tower block. Look how epic this tower block looks. Why can't we have tower blocks like this in England? This has to be one of the most stunning looking ruthless tower blocks I've ever seen. I just love the architecture. I like all the little features to it. This looks proper 60 brutalist, so let's go and explore. It. Why can't we have tower blocks like this in England? It's a well good tower block. It looks so awesome. Why can't we have ones like this in England? That's so nice looking. Buns a bit way round. No safety as usual. Can you open that? We can. Slide it in, yep. top floor certainly I did not manage to get on the roof or motor room, but the corridors in this building are very spooky so let's take a look around This one set per set, this last one. This one set per set. So this is a single set, it's slightly bigger, that's why this is a goods lift. Because I'm riding the goods lift. Why is one upside down? Whee! Whee! Let's see and stop it at the floor. There's the stop button. Let's see how far away I'm gonna stop it now. Uh, yes. Just for a 
Let's see him do a reversal trick. Let's stop it and go to ten. So I'm going to go back up to ten. No, not quite a reversal. There's a time on it to make sure it doesn't quite do it and strain the motor. So let's try the bumper. Yeah, it does work. Should we try the upper flap? Yeah, that does. Okay. It's pretty safe. So then, in this video, I'm going to alternate between old and new. And as we've just taken a look at something old, let's go and take a look at something new. Let's take a look at this really nice, large, posh shopping centre. This shopping centre is really nice looking. Let's go and take a look around. And now we go to the main lifts, which are Schindler 5500s. And let's do so, I haven't done for quite a while. Let's go and surf the main lifts in the shopping centre. These lifts are very busy and surfing them is risky. Let's go and do it. And inside the Schindler 5500 lifts, now they've got the cone stickers where the contract was changed over to cone. They also installed a more recent lift in the shopping centre. It's a cone NMX 14. Let's ride it. So let's now go and take a look at something old and let's go to this very old mixed use building in the centre of Plovdiv. This building's got some epic old relay controlled lifts. These lifts are awesome. This would have originally been a set of two relay lifts, meaning I would have had a rare relay dispatcher. But sadly one of the lifts is now modernised, so the dispatcher is no longer there. But at least one of the lifts is still original. Let's go and ride the original relay control lift. This is nice. That is so Soviet looking. Let's now go up to the motor room. Yes, I managed to get into a motor room of this epic old relay controlled lift.
take a look around the centre of Plovdiv. This is what the city centre looks like. And along we go to a rather rough small scale shopping centre in the centre of Plovdiv. This is an older building that's sort of converted into a very small shopping centre all with independent shops. It's a little bit run down, although it does have some Arona hydraulic lifts. These lifts are floating lifts. This is because these are side chassis lifts, meaning that one side of the lift car has the chassis and the entire lift is supported from one side. Then the other side of the shaft, perpendicular to the supported side, is the lift door side, meaning the other two sides can be shaftless. Now, all hydraulic side chassis lifts can potentially be floating lifts. In practice, it's very rarely actually done. And it's just very nice they've done it here because it looks so weird. It's just so strange to see two sides of the lift perpendicular to each other being shaftless, making the lift look like it's floating. That is a piece of crane. How weird is this? Because I've got a crane there, but it's not complete. So if we look through here, there's your crane base. That there's the motors for a crane. Got another crane piece behind it just there. Where's the cabin? That's one bit I can't see the cabin. They just piled up all the pieces everywhere. And now we go along to a shopping centre bridge. This is a bridge over the river which doubles up as a shopping centre. This is a very small scale shopping centre just with very small independent shops in it. Now many hundreds of years ago back in medieval times it was actually commonplace to have bridges doubling up as shopping streets but in the modern day having this is actually very unusual. So we now walk across to the other side of this shopping centre bridge where there is a slightly larger shop which has some lifts although these lifts are very crap. And now we go to a new mixed use residential and commercial building. This building has a shaftless lift car and this is a full on shaftless car, looks like something from Spain with the circular glass at the back of the lift car. And although this lift looked like it intended to be a shaftless lift, it isn't because it's in a lift shaft. And now let's take a look at Plovdiv's trolley bus system. This system is abandoned. They have not run trolley buses here for many, many years. Which is really sad because Plovdiv would be much more awesome if it had trolley buses. And despite the fact that trolley buses have not run here for a very long time, the remains of the trolley bus wires can still be seen. These wires are in a very sad state. You wouldn't be able to run a trolley bus on these because all the tension on the wires has gone and all the wires are hanging in weird ways. But it does show what Plovdiv would have been like in the past. And here is a major road junction with trolley bus wires. Now big trolley bus junctions always fascinate me because there's loads of wires going everywhere. This trolley bus system would have been so nice. Such a shame it's been abandoned. 
And now we go along to a hotel. Now all of the hotels in Plovdiv are under renovation. Coronavirus must have hit Plovdiv very hard. This is a very small city and seems like some places it doesn't have much money and coronavirus must have really messed up the economy here. Now coronavirus is over, all the hotels are busy renovating and only a couple floors this hotel are in use. Now this hotel has one service lift and four main lifts. Let's take a look at the main lifts. And on these main lifts you can do an interesting comparison here because two of the lifts are Schindler 5500s when the other two are Schindler 3300 plus. All four of these lifts go 1.6 meters a second, so all the same speed. And the interiors of the lift, there's very little difference between the Schindler 5500 and 3300 plus. But what is different is the quality of the lift. Because the Schindler 5500 is a really good quality middle of the range lift. It's this very well built, loads of features. It's got intelligent leveling, intelligent overrun, which is something classic of Schindler, where when it's intelligent levels to a floor, it's allowed to overrun within reason and bounce back, which speeds up the journey if it does this. Plus it also has intelligent pre-start and it's got a chassis. It's nice. two lifts are 3300 plus and this is a slightly better built version of a 3300 but it's no chassis and the quality just isn't there it's a very cheap lift and it's just like a tin can and the doors are actually better quality than the regular 3300 but they're not as good as the Schindler 5500 so a big big difference in quality here but for a regular passenger's point of view they probably wouldn't even notice the difference between these lifts So then let's now go to the service lift which is an epic old lift without any doors. This lift is awesome. Whee. And now I'll go along to a residential building which has got a really nice old lift without inner doors. Very nice.
and let's go out onto the roof. Then now we go along to the Plovdiv musical fountain. That's right, Plovdiv actually has a musical fountain. Now I've seen musical fountains before in big posh cities such as Dubai in UAE, Elat in Israel and this posh office district area of Malta. Now I would not have expected a small city in Bulgaria to have a musical fountain and sadly even though I turned up at the right time for the music show, the music show didn't happen so I didn't get to see this fountain sync to music but the fountain was still on and it still looked very nice. And now I go along to the place where I was staying. This room is very small and cramped. This here is not the bed. This is actually meant to be a sofa and the bed's actually above this. So they whittle out to the room. The room is decorated quite well, although the walls are very thin. I can hear the people next door very clearly. And over here is a bottle of cooking oil. No, it's actually piss. And now we go along to Plovdiv bus station. This is linked by a tunnel to Plovdiv train station and it's got a little lift. Now, talking about remote airports, there's Frankfurt Hahn. Oh dear, that's a bad one. Then there's Warsaw Modlin, which is a long way from Warsaw, but transport links are pretty good and it's quite cheap because it's Poland prices. But then you've got Plovdiv Airport, the airport with no public transport to the centre and it's 10 kilometres away. 